Hello guys and welcome to the James Sinclair Q&A show here on YouTube, Linky Dink, Twitbook. We're on Twitter now, aren't we, Chudders? Yeah. And Facebook. So we're on Twitbook and... <laughs> face Twit. Face... Uh, yeah, sure. Face... Twitter. <laughs> so we're on all platforms now. So yes, guys, the big brand news here is that James Sinclair is now on Twitter. And uh, the handle, I've got a Twitter handle, which I've taken off of one of my doors. <laughs> Get that, Chuds. Door handle. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what, what is it, Chuds? Um, How do people find us on Twitter? Just search James Sinclair. Just search James Sinclair. I think it's James, at James Sinclair 85, but we're yeah. going to try to change that. Well, the best way to do it is when you search James Sinclair, there's loads of people that come up and just choose the most attractive one. That'll be me. Uh, and then you can follow us on Twitter. So please follow us on Twitter. What we're going to do is, um, uh, I mean, we're, we're everywhere now, but what we really are trying to do is uh, we're trying to get people to answer as many um, you know questions to us so that we can answer them and that's what the James Sinclair Q&A show is all about as Chudders read through three fantastic questions that we've yeah. had uh, we take them mostly off of YouTube don't we yeah YouTube's uh, our favourite YouTube's our favourite so if you put the question on YouTube you've got far more chance of it coming through mainly because we get less uh, comments on YouTube if it goes on yeah, LinkedIn yeah we've got LinkedIn we, and Facebook we're just, just so popular on LinkedIn but we just haven't got time to go through the <laughs> four comments we get a day um, no but yeah so if uh, please comment on YouTube uh, hit subscribe on YouTube uh, because that means that uh, we can see the comments because that's where we put you know the whole library of videos is there and actually that's a really good thing if you've been following us on LinkedIn or you found us on Facebook if you want to see my full library of content that Chudders puts up YouTube's the one to go yeah, to isn't it because yeah, yeah. We, we store everything there it's like the yeah. encyclopedia Link, LinkedIn and Facebook you see when people are scrolling but if you go on YouTube yeah. it's all nicely organised for you, so well, well, so different. I'm just to talk about we've seen Gary Vaynerchuk very recently last we? week, yeah. Saw him very recently. What a fabulous guy that was! I think seeing Gary Vaynerchuk, um, I, I mean, I was a fan of Gary V, and I think you, you was a fan of yep. Gary V before. Uh, we definitely got into this space, he was definitely the first on yep. this daily video for entrepreneurs. I mean, there's obviously lots of vloggers around, well, he was probably the, the first that made it big. I'm sure yep. there's people that tried, but in sort of this space of business and entrepreneurship and he's definitely the biggest still in business and entrepreneurship yeah, huge, yeah. who's that who's that Ty Lopez number two yeah. would you say Ty, well arguably bigger but it's close yeah and then Grant Cardone Grant Cardone yeah uh, Tony Robbins slightly Tony Robbins yeah Tony Robbins still probably be the biggest then wouldn't he if yeah you, if you um, classified business and and then we're number five I'd say <laughs> in the world <laughs> Dominating, uh, not yet, but we will. Yeah, we we, we want to be in the top five in the world, and I think um, I think there is space for a Brit up there. So if you're British, with the help listen, of the people listening, with the help of the people listening, and we keep doing it. We're, we're over a year into this little yeah. journey of uh, videos and uh, and getting our stuff out there. So so that that's been a that's been a real big plus for the last four weeks. Next thing is we took some of our members to the Houses of Parliament, yeah. um, and something I'm really passionate about. Entrepreneurs Network doing is becoming a lobbyists for government uh, so we're putting lots of things out there where we think government could make just tiny changes to make the life of an SME a business owner entrepreneur certainly in the United Kingdom uh, but uh, you know I think governments around the world can listen to our stuff because I think entrepreneurs and business owners can solve well I think entrepreneurs solve all the world's problems you know you want to tackle environment uh, entrepreneurs are doing more to tackle environment than businesses right now you can see what Elon Musk is doing with electric cars um, you know that's faster than any government's done so entrepreneurs are you know first to solve the problems that we've got in the world and I just want them to do more to help businesses in their early years I think there's quite a lot out there to help businesses that are super duper profitable that are making loads of money they pay low corporation tax but I'm all about let's get businesses through the first 10 years um, what am I if anyone ever does listen from government on this I think the big things that we need to teach businesses uh, or, you know government decision makers is that businesses are like children they need 21 25 years before they can stand on their own two feet and the short-termism approach you know expecting businesses to be super duper profitable in the first two or three years would you let a three-year-old live on its own without the help of its parents and I think we have a responsibility uh, as a government and uh, as the United Kingdom PLC to help businesses more so if you are listening, we're meeting MPs, we're meeting ministers, we're uh, making them listen to our pleas to see if we can make any changes on that. And hopefully our questions that come through on the Q&A show uh, will be siphoned off of our videos to make sure we answer the best possible ones. Now, is there anything else we've done this month, Chance, or the last couple of weeks that we need to put in? 
I'm any sure. more updates? Any more updates? I could do so much. Though. We're, we're over a thousand yeah, subscribers oh, yeah. on YouTube now. Oh, big deal. We've uh, broke through the one thousand subscriber barrier on YouTube. Yeah. Now that might not sound like a lot of people, but it's it get, the hardest one thousand, isn't it? Yes. So. Yeah, getting a thousand friends or a thousand likes on Facebook or LinkedIn is much yeah, 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 yeah. easier than YouTube. Uh, breaking through on YouTube is just, uh, you know, so hard tough. Hard work. Hard work. Yeah. So, so we're uh, I think we're on one thousand one hundred thirty actually yeah. now, aren't we? So we. Um, I think we're going to get to 10,000 far quicker than we got to 1,000. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, so we've, we've got to do, what's that, 9,000, no, yeah, 9,800, 9,780, or 9,770 before Christmas. <laughs> no, before April next year. Okay. Can Nuts. we do it? Can we do it? We'll find out, won't we? We'll, we'll find Listen out. to this in a year time. So think. if you're listening to this, please click on over to YouTube and help our plea. Okay, so uh, so we've got three fantastic questions that we're going to answer here on the James Sinclair Q&A show. And if you really like the answers to these questions, please don't forget, you know, let's send some questions to us. Comment on any of our videos um, uh, on YouTube. Just say, you know, because there's loads of different videos. And if you've got a question, you know, on any video, we'll take it off and we'll put it into the James Sinclair Q&A show. So without further ado, Chalice, can you give me question number one and I'll see if I can give the best advice that yep. I can. So this comes from Adam White. Hello, Adam White. Thank you for sending us your question. Hi, James and Chudders. My question is, what is the real price? Can I just stop it? You're getting more famous than me on this little video journey. Maybe because you always acknowledge me behind the camera. That's because you're beautiful. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Anyway, my question is, what the real price of employing someone? As an example, someone who is paid £300 a week, what would it cost the employer with national insurance tax and pension contributions? as I am thinking of changing from self-employed to staff to employed for more sta- stability. Many thanks, Adam. So Adam's the guy here. Yep. So first of all, Adam, I think it's, it's abundantly clear that the government in the United Kingdom are trying to get companies not to have self-employed people working for them. Every year they put more and more measures into uh, making that happen. They want people employed over uh, self-employed for companies. And that's the, they're putting more and more policies and procedures in to make sure that uh, companies employ. Uh, and the difference now is not much. So I think you'll find... Uh, in time, if especially if you're going to grow your business, and hopefully you will grow your business, you're going to have to employ them anyway. So um, that that that's going to happen. Here's the here's the next thing though. Um, you 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 raise a very good question because I you know teach all my team and tell all my team the cost of someone's salary is only the beginning. Um, if you if you take into all the other things, not just the national insurance, not just the pension costs, uh, not just the holiday costs. If you take into the account that someone's got to manage the person, uh, and if you take into the account that someone's got to train the person um, uh, and if you add on all those costs so as a rule of thumb um, what I always tell our team is whatever the salary is add 30% because that will um, cover the costs of all of the HR costs I mean HR costs employing people uh, running payroll uh, running the pension costs that is the number I think and I think that's low actually I think that's low If in reality if you think about managing managers to manage the people um, and all of your time and the time it takes to train someone because there's no point employing people if you don't dedicate loads of training time into them there's a rule of thumb that it takes 90 days for a member of team to be profitable so that's three months salary before they start becoming profitable now that's the worst case scenario in some ways um, you know people can be profitable uh, and good for the business within 30 days that if you want them to be really good for the business and profitable within 30 days it's the amount that you train them don't be the business owner that employs someone that says Oh, you know, my staff are used to this. They don't. They don't get it. They don't get it. it. You know, you've got to think yourself running a school. You know, how long does it teach someone in a school to get them to understand a subject? And the same is for business. The amount of time that needs to be dedicated uh, to put into training uh, for roles in business is absolutely astronomical. So don't forget the training. Add that cost in. So in conclusion, if you're paying someone ten thousand pounds a year, the real cost is thirteen thousand pounds. A year. So if you've got a hundred thousand pounds worth of salaries, I believe the real cost is one hundred and thirty thousand. So just add on thirty uh, percent, and that's a good rule of thumb. That'll cover your training. That'll cover all your national insurance. Blah 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 blah. Pension costs, uh, and I think that is the lowest. Uh, I, I know people that uh, add on fifty percent uh, for the real cost of employment. There we go, Chuds. Hopefully that answers the question. Yep. Perfect. <clears throat> Looking forward to question number two. From Andy H. Hello, Andy H. 
Was he in Steps? <laughs> I didn't know that. In a business where you buy and sell a product, how do you compete with multinationals and internet competitors working on single fin- f- single figure margins in favour of volume and rebates? USP and customer cuddles only go so far. We are experts in our field, but once the magic recipe is taught, clients can just buy the ingredients. I've watched all your videos with interest. Thanks for the tips and sharing your experience. Gentleman's name again, Andy H. Andy H. Andy, well, so so there's three things I want to say here. Number one, you can't. Number two, uh, if you've got brand, that's how you can do it. Um, uh, uh, and personal brand is how you can do it. So let, let's take those. And then there is a fourth thing that I wanted to go into detail. Um, if you haven't got a brand, then you can't. It's all about you know doing volume you've got to turn billions to make millions in effect so you know when you look at supermarket chains making 1.4 percent net profit that means for every hundred pound that goes through the till tesco are keeping one pound 40 circa average roughly um so so you're you're in that camp now it's all right for big supermarkets that they do turn billions of pounds but if you're turning millions of pounds for single digit margins then that's always going to be difficult. Now, however, if you stamp a brand on it, um, so, you know, you buy a pair of sunglasses uh, for 50 quid, the same sunglasses can then have Ray-Ban on and they are now worth 180, 200 pounds. That they're, you know, made in the same factory and this happens all around the world. So when you stamp a credible brand onto it, a fantastic brand onto it, uh, then you can increase the margin. Um, You can increase the price and it's all about the brand. So if you can build a brilliant brand, uh, but brilliant brands are built over generations usually it don't happen in three or four years very very rare so uh, that, that's a real high hanging fruit but that's how you do it now the other thing is you can build a personal brand now, i don't know what space you're in but you may be able to get celebrities to endorse your brand um so it, I don't know, and, and getting celebrity endorsement is nowhere near as expensive as people really think i was thinking i was listening to someone that sold their business for millions and millions of pounds started with 200 grand uh, and they used a celebrity it cost them 50 grand to endorse their products and that really catapulted their business and they put in 200 grand they sold it for 10 million just 24 minutes 24 months later so that 50 grand investment into celebrity endorsement did work for them it really helped grow their business it gave them trust and it sort of um gave them a usp over everyone else that was in the market place now what you could do is if you can't afford a celebrity is maybe you give a celebrity a slice of your company i don't actually know what the exact product is that you do now that um, maybe that's uh it's an option for you but the fourth one is really really important if you've got a commoditized product um, and a commoditized industry where everyone is doing single digits and you're really good at what you do maybe you bolt on something to the loss leading product that does have margin so supermarkets are pros at this they sell bread and milk uh, at a loss but then they do sell other things within the store that has higher margin in there but they get people in on the low margin stuff so maybe your low margin stuff is actually your marketing tool to get people in and then you're going to sell higher margin products to your existing database um, and that is a very smart thing to do uh, you think about Disney they do this the, the other way around it's really expensive to get into Disney and then they sell things which usually have no margin or low margin on like a bottle of water um, you can go and buy a bottle of water in a supermarket for 33 pence you buy it in disney world it'd be three dollars or three pounds uh, because they've got you in and it's a captive audience then they can sell something that has no margin for massive margin so that that could be your fourth option maybe it's you bolt on a consultancy service or maybe you bolt on other products and services that you could sell that are in the same space that have margin um, similar really for entrepreneurs network you know our baseline level membership doesn't really make any money for us um, 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 our events don't make any money for us but then when people come to our uh, one-to-one events and our uh, high training events there's more margin in those but we've got people in on the low margin thing hopefully that answers your question um, so you, you've got your products as a loss leader it's now time to bolt on some stuff that does have margin uh, because people have bought from you in a small way so the way I t- talk about this is um, it's uh, people are trying before they really buy so it's not try before you buy it's trying before they really buy so this could be someone you know i don't know using you to buy a hundred pounds worth of stuff they like buying the hundred pounds worth of stuff so they're trying you out but then they really buy and buy thousands of pounds worth of stuff in the future good i think that's a good answer isn't yeah. it Chudders? you talk a lot about margin so yeah i think so too yeah that's good question number three <clears throat> 
I also want to point out that we've picked the worst table to be sat at as well. Yeah, just as wobbly. you were talking then, the microphones are just all over the place. Sorry about that. But um, we've got a wobbly table here. Disaster. It's all right. So this is another question, final question from Derek West. Hello, Derek. Hi, James. Met you at Attacker when I used to run I it. I remember Derek. He's a really nice man. Derek West. Yeah, Derek West. Moved on from there now to concentrate solely on our new business. We're a husband and wife business. We run Arcadia Rug Spa where people drop off their area rugs and we clean them to a very high standard. We do all the manual work, the website and marketing, even the books and making the brews. We do absolutely everything. It seems to get lost in what to do next. What's the best way to plan our day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month to-do lists? Especially hard when we get busy or when something crops up that gets in the way of what we have planned. Seems impossible to get everything done with extras that pop up. Feel we, I feel we are losing this battle and can't afford to employ others to help out. Business is getting stronger every week, but we are still not quite hitting profit. So Derek, uh, it's classic, you know, growing a business from the, the, the ground up, uh, you're growing every week, you're turning money, you're burning cash, it's what happens in small businesses uh, when they start out, ours did exactly the same. So here, here's the thing that I just wanted to say, Derek, you know, you wear all. You know, when I started out in my business, I was doing all what you was doing there. I was wearing. Uh, I've done this talk so many times. You wear all the hats. You're the head of HR. You're the head of operations. The head of sales, marketing. You're the managing director. You're the system managing director. You're the, you know, the you know the head of every single department. Um, and what, what what I think people get bogged down in is they think they need to employ someone full time to help them out, and you don't. I think you need to just get yourself an administrator. And he's saying you can't afford anyone yet, but could you afford someone to come in ten hours a week? So that's going to cost you ninety pounds, maybe eighty pounds, maybe you get an apprentice at seventy, sixty pounds, um, yeah, whatever it is, a, a very low amount that can do all the administration and all the paperwork and answer all the emails, so that removes from you and then the next person i would get is a bookkeeper um that will remove all the accounts and finance from you so the the more that you can spend time on seeing customers um uh, here's the thing right here's the absolute thing um it's a decision um when you the way i I listen to the question that you've asked me is you are already putting that mindset in place we can't afford someone um, we can't do this. Uh, we're too busy. So what you need to do is say, no, we're building the business up so we can employ someone. And you decide that's what you want to do. Um, it's, it's like me with exercise. I said I was too busy to exercise because um, I just didn't want to do it, Chance. That's the absolute truth. And I, I kept putting it off, making excuses. So I got my PA to make sure that I have these things scheduled in. I don't book in the sessions. I don't even know all of my food that I eat at work in the week now. I've put in these systems and processes to make sure that it happens. Um, now, there is a, a relationship here to what you're going through because you're saying we can't afford to employ anyone. And I'm saying you're probably thinking I can't find a £20,000 salary or a £15,000 salary. But I bet you could afford 80 to £90 pounds a week to take all the administration off of you. Now, also, when you employ someone, you get 30 days credit on it because you pay them 30 days after they start. Um, so if they're making differences within those 30 days, it should be really good. Uh, so what I'm saying is, can we find £400 for the first month or £800 for two months to relieve time up so that you can focus on sales and marketing? Because when you focus on the sales, you get more sales in and you'll start being profitable. Um, but you've got to make that decision that you desperately, desperately want someone. Uh, and the question I ask everyone is, you know, if I told you, that if you don't employ someone and pay their wages and get profitable and more efficient, you will die in 120 days. And that sounds horrible, this chance. But (laughs) if you don't do it, then you will die in 120 days. I guarantee you will find a way to do it. Um, Because human beings are survivors. Um, It's very difficult in the early days of a business, but we do put mental blocks in our head. You know, there is a, you know, a formula for change that we teach, you know, if you're dissatisfied, um, then, then you can make change happen. So you're obviously dissatisfied with where you are right now, so you can make the change happen. And then it's about two things. It's first steps uh, and vision. So what's the vision of what you want your business to look like when it's finished? And what are the first steps that are you going to make to make those changes happen? Um, so start systemizing things in your business. Why 
do you need to do everything else? You can embrace technology, and there's loads of free tech out there that can help you right now. So you could use an accountancy software program. I'm sure if you rang up Zero uh, or QuickBooks, there's like a 90-day free trial. So that could you know, take all the paperwork out of your business, which is going to free you up more time. Um, and But what you've got to do is make sure those first steps and that vision beats resistance. The resistance is going to come over you to not do these things. So let me use my exercise analogy here again. I was dissatisfied that I was getting fatter by the week chatters, right? The first steps for me was to get a personal trainer, but the first step was actually to research the personal trainer and make the first call and meet the personal trainer. Did I do any of that? No. The first steps for me was to make sure that someone else did it for me to make sure that I did those things. So I got Tracy to make those first steps happen. I had the meeting with the personal trainer. She books it in. She orders my, I have this meal food prep now because um, it stops me just snacking unnecessarily at work. Um, and that, that process beats the resistance because I was resisting myself, Chad. So I was resisting myself to pick up the phone and book in the exercise sessions because I knew I just wouldn't go to the gym after work. This happens before I start work. He's at my door at seven o'clock every morning that I have this Peter. He's outside. He even texts me, wakey, wakey, sweet cheeks, time for exercise. <laughs> Does he actually say that? Yeah, yeah, he absolutely has sent me that, um, that text message. So I'm beating the resistance and I think we've got to find ways to beat the resistance. I absolutely believe that I was in camp one which is dissatisfaction equals change you know I was dissatisfied that equals the change but it's taking the first steps and the first steps is getting your head in the right place that yes we want to employ someone because lots of business owners are scared of employment I get why it's scared of employment because it's a constant drain of cash each month um, and you've got to find the money but Otherwise, you're in the danger of just building yourself a profitable job. And no one wants to buy a profitable job when you get to retirement and pension. You want to build a business that works under management without you in it. So I'm not saying you have to employ someone full time. Maybe you're just going to get a mum that works 10 till 2 every day just to take all the administration off of you. All of the administration so you haven't got any excuses of why that stuff's not getting done. Um, it's a plan, guys. It's a systems and a processes plan to help you build your business that can work without you in it. I think that was a, I don't know. a very passionate answer. Yeah, yeah, it was because I get where he's at. I absolutely get where you're at, Dell. It's 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 difficult. Um, I would suggest that you come along um, to one of our foundations events uh, before any of our business spectacular. That's four hours with me teaching all this stuff. Um, if you're a member of Entrepreneurs Network, which I think Derek is, it's absolutely free to come along to that event. I think it'd be very useful for you. So I think that wraps up another James Sinclair Q and A show. Yeah, we, uh, we're gonna pick. A winner, sent some magazines. Yes, out. best question. We'll, we'll send a prize, the best question. Chad has always gets to decide um, the best prize. So we've got the first question about cost of employment, a uh, question about margin, or Derek's question about day-to-day, -day not being able to afford. Which which do you think was best? Oh, I think they were... Well, let, let's, let's, um, let's send Derek uh, a free ticket to come to Foundations if he isn't a member. Okay. And if he is a member, I'll buy him a drink. Uh, at okay. one of our events so he's won sounds either fair, way so Derek West you're the, the winner of this week's uh, podcast Q&A show with me James Sinclair and the question master was Michael Chudley uh, he's just an amazing beautiful man and so am I <laughs> so thank you very much for listening uh, we'll be back very soon with another Q&A show please don't forget to follow us on Twitter LinkedIn Facebook and all the things in between and if you've got questions put them on YouTube and we'll get them on the Q&A show thanks for listening guys thanks guys see ya bye